I'm Jason Hodson from Lenore, Manitoba. I am involved with Rosebank Farms, our, our family corporation, which uh, involves my brother, Jonathan Hodson, and uh, my retired parents, Innes and Joan Hodson. And uh, they really deserve a lot of the credit for encouraging us and developing us to think uh, environmentally. Uh, we farm just south of Lenore, Manitoba. It's a 250 uh, herd commercial and purebred Black Angus herd. We also have a feedlot that's capable of handling a couple hundred head of animals. And then we have a grain operation that covers about 5,000 acres of annual crop and uh, perennials and pasture land. We have invested in shelter belts for a number of years. Uh, my father initiated that uh, probably 18 years ago when we started planting shelter belts. And uh, in reality, we've planted 18 miles of shelter belts uh, since we started this. Um, principally, they're, they're laid out across quarter sections. Um, there's technically a six miles worth at three rows wide. And we've seen quite a dramatic change in terms of the micro environment with those uh, shelter belts. Um, it's also improved soil erosion, and, or reduced soil erosion. It's reduced water erosion from the runoff across the fields and the trenches and stuff like that. We've combined that with putting alfalfa strips around the, the mm -hmm. uh, shelter belt rows uh, for erosion protection, but also to minimize the risk of chemical damage from the spraying of the normal field operations. Um, we've also put the shelter belts in, in place because we have a 250 head cow herd. It's a commercial and a purebred Black Angus herd. And uh, we wanted a place to put the cattle uh, with some degree of comfort during the winter that wasn't at the home site. Um, so we tried to integrate with the shelter belts uh, winter grazing. And uh, so we've combined that with swath grazing. Uh, and for the most part, the cows stay out in the fields throughout the whole winter. Um, and we've done that for about 10 years of the last 10 years. And it's been a great experience. Um, we've got lots of advice before we did it, saw a few other producers do it, and, uh, and, and we find it very workable on our farm. It's reduced our manure cleaning, feedlot cleaning costs uh, probably by at least $6,000 per year, a minimum. Um, that's been the biggest advantage, plus we're not, uh, centralizing all that manure and all the nutrients that go with it in one location, it's out in the field. So we not only reduce some manure costs, we reduce some fuel costs, labor, um, management. It just seems more natural that the cattle are out in the fields uh, doing their work out there. So the swath grazing, we principally use a millet, a golden German millet. Uh, we've used other crops, but it seems to have a nice waxy layer that preserves it and doesn't rot over winter or, or in the fall, if you get lots of rain in the fall. And uh, one of the questions that people always ask is, uh, do the cows go to it even if the snow is deep? And absolutely. They get trained on it, they go to it, they find it. They're like deer and they're like horses. They will dig down and get to the um, millet. Um, we, we do cross fence and then we move a uh, portable electric fence every day or every second day. So that, that there is a change in what your labor work is, but we do do that. And you only give the cows as much as they need for one day, maybe two, because otherwise they will start to bet on it and waste it. And we want to avoid that. Um, there's only been two years in the last 10 where we've done swath grazing that we've actually had to, had too much snow that they couldn't deal with or too hard of snow. It's only been two years, and even then, over those, those times that we had to deal with that issue, it was only for a very short window, and it was generally in March, uh, when the snow had accumulated and, and the sun rays caused a hardening of snow. Uh, so then, in those situations, we'll just take, out, take a tractor out and uh, either push the snow or drive on the swath to, uh, to just break the crust for them. But other than that, uh, swath grazing has been a real bonus to us. The shelter belts uh, have provided a, a rich new environment for birds and wildlife. Um, they certainly had an impact on wind and water erosion in terms of reducing that. Um, but it's really helped improve the microclimate. We've planted a variety of species in the shelter belts. Primarily the rows are green ash in the middle 
and then in the outside rows are lilac and um, see no b b silver buffalo berry. We've also planted tree rows around our yards, our home sites for our employee as well as for ourselves. And in those rows, there's everything from roses to choke cherries to uh, evergreens, and uh, they've been a wonderful benefit around the yard site. It certainly attracts the wildlife from birds to, to animals and uh, for the most part the, the kind of wildlife that you want and doesn't, that isn't destructive. So It's been good. I would encourage producers to give it some thought, especially the swath grazing and integrating the, uh, the shelter belts with that. Um, it certainly does reduce your labor, it reduces your fuel, it, it reduces your environmental imprint and uh, it works with nature rather than sort of fighting nature. Uh, it's great that we can have the cattle out in the field and not around the yard accumulating manure. So it's worked out well for us and we've been awarded the uh, Canadian uh, Agri-Food Award of Excellence for Sustainable Development back in 2003. The province recognized us for that. We've appreciated those awards and I hope it encourages others to pursue the same thing. One other advantage that we re really notice, and, and again, this is anecdotal, but it is our observations that there is certainly more wildlife. Uh, keeping the tree rows, rather than clearing from f ditch to ditch, um, has it allowed the wildlife to live in a safe habitat. So more foxes, uh, uh, more ki well, coyotes, but they can be advantage and a disadvantage, but certainly there is more wildlife. and. Uh, and it's a pleasure to see that. And I think they're an important part of, of nature and, and a part of living here. And uh, so I just encourage producers to give it some thought. It isn't just about what the money that you could make today. There is longer term implications to our daily decisions or our annual decisions. And uh, we have chosen not to, to cultivate ditch to ditch. And uh, because we believe in the long term, it will provide greater benefits than just sort of the short term gain and it's tempting but uh, we think it's the right thing to do we've a, we've tried different uh, species within the shelter belt rows uh, we do have some rows that are willows and they're primarily surrounding some sloughs that we wanted to preserve uh, rather than drain and uh, they because they like water they certainly thrive there uh, we have tried some poplars and i think in the future if we were to plant more rows I would uh, put less green ash because it seems to be most sensitive to environmental factors and chemical damage and stuff like that and, uh, plant, and, and possibly plant some more poplars. Um, I also wanted to say that we've had lots of uh, interesting visitors uh, who've seen the shelter bellies or heard about them. Uh, we've even had guests from Winnipeg come out and wanted to pick some of the sea buckthorn to make jam out of them or for the, the health food uh, health industry. And uh, I know my wife has made some jams from the choke cherries and other things, and, and so is my mother. So there's lots of um, uh, benefits to the shelter belts. Um, we also skidoo with our kids in the winter time, and uh, where the shelter belts are, the, the snow can be up to 15 feet deep, and on the edge of the rows, and it makes for wonderful uh, skidooing and fun and sledding. Um, but if anybody would like more information, uh, they certainly are welcome to contact me at 204-838-2309, 838-2309. Uh, if you would like to come out and have a visit, you're certainly welcome, but we do ask that you make an appointment first. Thank you.